Round about June of 2013, I did a video covering some of the dangerous LED lights available from China and how they're not really particularly safe uh, due to the thin wiring and the lack of strain relief. And But, you know, you can actually salvage the LEDs out of them. It's quite a cheap way to get a lot of LEDs. And I thought I'd cover them because, um, well, I actually thought I'd cover more than more than just the little 100 sets. Excuse the fact the cover's missing. It, it came with the cover rattling loose in the post. But I, I thought I'd cover the 200 LED set, which is uh, just for variety, and also a 500 LED set, just, uh, just to see what difference there is between them. So um, these uh, sets are basically arranged. Uh, the thicker, by the way, is because they're on unsmoothed but full wave rectified DC, and they're controlled by little thyristors. I'll show you the inside of this um, afterwards. Um, so that causes a slight flicker because they're basically turning on and off um, every, you know, about twice every full sine wave. And, uh, you know, to the naked eye, it's not that visible. It gets more visible with the bigger sets because they really are running a lot of LEDs in the big sets. But um, I'll, I'll show you how many they're running uh, afterwards. So I'll just unplug these at the moment to get rid of the annoying flicker. So they're actually wired. Um, the string is actually wired with a, a common positive, and then in the case of these 100 LED sets, it's 33 LEDs except for the one that will be 34 just to make it up to the 100. And it's basically a string of LEDs, and right at the very end they then add resistors in. And they add the resistors in, a multiple of resistors, inside the little heat shrink sleeves. Basically speaking, inside the sleeve you get the LED you've got a little spacer inside, which looks like that from the end, but it goes down the middle and it keeps the wires apart and keeps everything aligned. And you've got a little resistor, which does not it's not even quarter watt. It looks like 0.128. It looks like eighth watt type resistor. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, that's one of the main issues with them is the fact that they get pretty hot. And they've tacked these in. It's almost, you know, if they'd used quarter watt resistors, it might have been a bit better, but they've used these resistors and that's what we're stuck with. But uh, they have this spacer, they put these bars in, a uh, very thin wire, uh, and then they put a bit of heat shrink sleeve ring around them. Now they do say these are suitable for outdoor use, and they're really not suitable for outdoor use because uh, the water will get in. It does pose a slight shock risk in that aspect because, well, the, the mains voltage. Uh, and also they will just corrode inside like like any, you know, these normal outdoor lights do that aren't properly sort of sealed against moisture. They do kind of semi-justify the fact that, you know, they say with these ones uh, that the controllers, that the controllers should be kept indoors. In reality, everything should be kept indoors. Not just kept indoors, but kept indoors at a great height and nothing, you know, nowhere near anything flammable. So lots of uh, things to fill there. But uh, since this is partially opened, I shall open it the rest of the way and I'll show you what the typical circuitry. These are very mass-produced units. And they just, it's clear that's how they make them. They just, uh, either they've pre-sold them or they just actually assemble it uh, in mass, you know, in a factory somewhere with these little controllers put together. And then they've got this little panel that they can just tack the wires on afterwards and then clip the cover over. Sometimes with a strain relief, which consists of a quick wipe of hot melt glue, which isn't really ideal. So the control board itself is very simple. It's using a little cob chip-on board, which is where the chips mounted directly onto a little bit of circuit board material and then covered in a blob of resin. And for some reason, you know, well, obviously it's just it's the number of LEDs. These boards are universal. They can be used with 24 volt LED strings. They could be used with 120 volt, 240 volt. All they do is change a couple of the resistor values. And uh, where's my notepad? There we go. The circuit boards in these are like this. They've got uh, the mains come in, mains in, and it goes straight to a rectifier. A bridge rectifier formed from four discrete diodes, probably one in four double o sevens or thereabout. So we get AC, AC plus, minus. The output uh, then drives, it, a power supply is derived from the output of the positive, uh, for start it goes to the LED common, LED common positive. 
And also from that is derived a power supply for the little chip, and that's just literally a resistor feeding an electrolytic capacitor. And the, that then goes into the chip, and the chip must just have its own, own reference. It must have a zener or something in, inside. And this is, a, in the case of the, on 240 volt, this one is 150K, this resistor. The capacitor is 16 volt, 100 microfarad. Here's a chip, so it's uh, got a reference to ground. It also has a little resistor coming from the main side. Well, I say a little resistor. It's actually quite a high-value resistor. So it comes down. There's the resistor, and it's used for timing, and it's 2 megohm. And the purpose of that is that because these can dim, they need to know whereabouts in the sine wave they are, so that's where it gets its reference with uh, reference to the negative terminal. It, it uses it as a sort of basically a timing reference. It can derive the sort of position in the sine wave from that, from when the voltage drops to zero on this resistor. Then after that, it's got a button which goes to ground, and that's the little button used to select the patterns. Uh, and then its outputs, it has up to four, drive what appear to be little thyristors. I'm guessing, being thyristors, it can just fire them with a trigger pulse. I don't think they're MOSFET. I'm pretty sure from the past that I recall they were thyristors. I'm pretty sure I looked at the number of those a while back. PGR406X. PGR, I'll just write that down. PGR406X. And that would kind of make sense, the thyristors, because if you can get very sensitive thyristors, and if you give them a pulse, they, they sort of latch on, and it just means that all this has to do is just put a pulse out, and it means it doesn't require much of a current supply. And that then goes to the channel one, and you'd have up to four channels, but these just use three, and the reason for that is that in the case of uh, 240 and maybe even 110, they divide the LEDs the 100 LEDs into three circuits of 33 with one as 34, and that, that just, you know, um, I suppose they could go four, but if they if they did divide it into four circuits, it would be 25 LEDs per circuit, and then the res resistors would start getting a bit wacky. I've seen, uh, in fact, I've seen a controller that just uses one channel, which is hideous, and the one that's driving the white LEDs, the 500 LED set, is just using two, and all they've done is uh, put in just the two uh, thyristors. Now, in the past, uh, on my website, I've shown a video, not a video, uh, just a web, web page dedicated to bypassing these things, because if you don't like the chasing patterns that these things always power up in, you can either just open it up and bridge out the... Um, thyristors so the channels are on all the time or you can just replace the whole thing with a bridge rectifier because it's basically AC in and then DC full wave rectified out with the one common and all the other channels just all twisted together but you have to be careful with that because they're really ungenerous with the resistors in these uh, they really rate them to be hot during the flashing cycle but if you click through to the pattern where they're just lit it continually they get very hot and I, I shall show you the temperatures they reach uh, Actually, I'll do that right now. So I stripped down several sort of sets and uh, made some notes. The first one, which was very exciting, uh, this one here, uh, which uh, has the 100 LEDs, uh, draws about 8 watts. And all these circuits seem to aim to run the LEDs at about 10 milliamps. But um, it's got three sets of 33 LEDs running at 10 milliamps. And it's got four 3.9K resistors uh, in line on each of the, those circuits, so 12 resistors in total. So that adds up to about 50.6K per circuit of LEDs. And when you work out the power dissipation, it's 1.56 watts if they're on static, divided by four is roughly 0.4 watts per LED, uh, per resistor, should I say. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I measured this temperature on a very cold day, and I measured it with thermal imaging camera, and it showed 114 degrees centigrade with relative to the room, which was like actually really cold at that time. It was down sort of near, you know, it was 10 to 15 degrees. Um, so pretty much 100 degrees centigrade higher than ambient temperature, which is just getting a wee bit squirmy, actually. 
I do recall one of the first sets I got of these. I, I don't know if they'd given me a 120 volt set, but it looked nice and bright and I was playing about with it and then noticed a funny smell and then I noticed all the heat shrink was discolouring and then the smoke started coming off and all the heat shrink started peeling back, exposing the bare metal work and it was like, oh, I suppose I better turn these off. Yeah, that was interesting. I've got another two sets, purple and pink, that I got recently, very Barbie. And they've got the 3x33 at 10 milliamps, same 8 watts of total rating when they're on static, but they have one extra resistor and they've lowered the value of the resistor, so 5x3k, a total of 15k per circuit. And that works out 1.5 watt total divided by the 5 is roughly 0.3 watts per resistor, and they come out round about 80 degrees centigrade. The green 200 set is different. Uh, it's got uh, the circuits, it's still divided into three channels, but it's divided the full 200 down into 66 LEDs uh, at 10 milliamps, and they've reduced the number of resistors accordingly. Three times three ohm, kilo ohm, nine K per circuit, and that means that, you know, they've aimed again to dissipate about 0.3 watts. So it's 0.9 divided by 3 is 0.3 watts, and the resistors run at the same temperature as with the 100 sets, the, the lower power 100 sets. Then it comes to the warm white LED set with the 500 LEDs. And what they've done here is they've got two sets of 83 LEDs in series. And then they've got th three multiples of that. So... Uh, that gives effectively six circuits across two channels. And they've got just got quite low value resistors for 910 ohm resistors, giving a total of 3.6k per circuit. And they're the only ones that run within this, a reasonable range for that resistor when they're on its static. And uh, they run at a comfortable 45 degrees centigrade, so just sort of hand warm, you know, it, it doesn't get really hot. Not that you should really be handling these lights while they're on for uh, reasons of safety, particularly given that some of the solder blobs are quite sharp and not uh, really protruding through the heat shrink, but close to it. So um, one thing that niggles me is the fact that, you know, these hot resistors are mounted directly on the negative terminal. Um, and that, you know, means that the negative terminal, which holds a chip, is going to get pretty, you know, it's going to increase the heat of the chip uh, directly for those particular LEDs. It's also worth mentioning, I'll bring the notepad in again, that as they increase the number of LEDs in the series, they get flickerier to the camera. Uh, actually, I'll bring in the flickeriest to the camera set, this set, and I'll plug them in. And they'll look super flickery. Because uh, when I shake an LED to get an idea of what sort of uh, level of flickering, uh, you're not really going to see this too much. But I get about a 50-50 on to off ratio of the LED. And even if I put them to the static mode, it'll seal super, you know, really annoyingly flickery to the camera. Um, again, it's not too bad looking at it, but it's starting to get a bit shimmery. And the reason for that is because they're increasing the uh, number of LEDs, the main sine wave, which is rectified, and to, so it's full wave rectified DC, the LEDs aren't really lighting until the voltage reaches about the... Well, let's see, it's about... Um, it's 83 LEDs, and they'll start conducting about 83 times 2.5. It's going to be about 200 volts before they even start turning on. So on the main sine wave, our main sine wave goes up to about 330 volts peak. So they're, they're not going to be lit until they actually reach that part of the sine wave. So they're only going to be lit for that part, and then the same again. And that's why it looks distinctly 50-50, because for this bit here, they're off completely. Uh, and just on for that period of time. And this made me think, you know, um, I wonder what I can do about this. So um, let's experiment, because I've still got one of these little capacitive droppers here. And I quite like the idea of using the capacitive dropper to drive these, because it's going to have the smoothing capacitor and it's also going to limit the current so it's going to take a lot of the strain off those uh, resistors and they're going to run cooler. So I'm going to experiment I think with, actually you know, let's do it with the real dog set, the one that was running at the 
104 degree, uh, 114 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to actually uh, just pause now while I just hack this into here and then we'll see what temperature they run at. Job done. One of these sets is flickering, one of these is not flickering. This is the one that was running at 114 degrees centigrade, the resistors, and they're now running at a much more manageable um, 50 degrees centigrade because it's now using the capacitive dropper to actually uh, put out a smoother DC with a, a, a voltage dropped across this. And it, the net result is that, you know, they look just as bright, actually, but the dissipation is reduced dramatically. So I'm just going to disconnect this, and I'll also remove these from the, from the scene because they're pretty ugly, flickering away as they are. And that just leaves boxing this up. Not the prettiest arrangement. Uh, I think I'd rather have something in a sort of better enclosure than this. But uh, this is a better result, I think. And that could uh, be applied to the other LEDs too, particularly the um, hundred, uh, the five hundred LEDs set to actually get more, get rid of the flicker or anything else. And I think they'd still just be as bright, um, and well, not as bright, but they'd still be a nice uh, brightness. So yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting thing to do. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I just did this for fun. Morning else, I'm, I still wouldn't recommend using these because, um, unfortunately, from a safety perspective, there's no way you can actually really make them safe because the fact there's 33 LEDs in the series means that you're going to need at least about 100 or so volts to actually get any decent sort of intensity out of these uh, to actually get the LEDs to light in the first place, in fact. And uh, yeah, and the sort of current that you'd want at you know, 5 milliamps up is going to be quite vicious at those voltages. But um, yes, that was, a, it was worth trying. It was an interesting little experiment and it worked quite well. Of course, I couldn't stop there, could I? I had to connect the 500 set onto it. And, you know, this is surprisingly bright, because now that current has been divided between, effectively, six parallel sections, about 80, 84 LEDs, which, incidentally, is this thing, the little power supply here, is designed for a string of about 80 LEDs, so, but that current will be divided down. So I'd say it's going to be about 3 or 4 milliamps per uh, circuit, but that's actually really surprisingly bright, and... Flicker, you're seeing a, a frame flicker on the TV, on the, uh, yep, the screen, but I'm shaking this and I'm seeing nothing. I'm not seeing any flicker. Maybe just a very slight modulation, but it's really nothing really major at all. Um, so that's, that's a good result. Again, obviously, these are the wiring of them is just not suited to kids, pets, anything like that. But um, it, certainly it's, it's just an interesting toy to play with for the electrically minded. I'm guessing the Chinese must have rubber Christmas trees or something like that if they put this stuff on them. Um, maybe it's as best as Christmas trees, just to stop them bursting into flames as well. But yes, it's, uh, it's, you know, I quite like this actually. And it's staggering. The actual power is coming up in the meter is about 3.5 watts. And if you think, really, for 500 LEDs? That's very impressive. So um, yeah, that's quite a fun thing. I might actually even use them in my unsafe house this Christmas. <laughs>